Please welcome to the stage, Chief Technology Officer, Jean-Michel Lemieux. Good morning. Yeah. Welcome back to day two of Unite. Now, some of you might have thought that we were done yesterday, but we just got started. We had a couple of small little launches that I hope you appreciated yesterday. Yeah. Um, we've got some more today as well. So I'm really excited to be back and kick this off. And I know there's some people on the internet yesterday were accusing us of like shaking the galaxy. Is that, is that, or the universe, I think they said? So um, we're going to keep going with that. So before I get started, though, I, I do want to like, truly thank everyone here and take a moment to thank you for continuing to trust Shopify, trusting my team and me for keeping your businesses running, scaling, and innovating. Now, there's a lot of perks of working with you and with entrepreneurs around the world. And I think everyone in this room probably gets something special from being in this community. Um, and for me, one of the biggest perks is everyone here has made me the coolest dad on the planet. <laughs> think about it. I'm probably not the only one, but think about the perk of being in this community, about learning about sneakers, cool clothes, great brands, like my daughter loves Thrive's Cosmetics, Boosted Boards, Culture Kings out of Australia. Like, I, kn I knew nothing about this before starting at Shopify. So on behalf of my kids, they thank you, every one of you. Now, we're, we're not here to talk pop culture 101. We're here to talk shop. So let's kick, kick this off. So yesterday, we had a lot of launches that were pretty exciting. But there's something that we didn't talk about that actually makes everything on this screen possible, makes it tick. And that's Shopify's technology platform, the technology that's inside our operating system that you heard so much about yesterday. And unless you follow me on Twitter or have read our engineering blog, it's something we actually haven't talked about that much. We haven't taken you behind the scenes. So that's my goal for this morning, is to show you what's in our platform, how it's built, and what we're going to be building next. So to do this, though, um, I'm going to take a bit of inspiration of what Jace told us yesterday. And Jace very eloquently said that the opportunity ahead relies on the wisdom of the past. So I'm going to take us all back in the past again, because as cool and smart as we think we are, we aren't the first to have built a global scale commerce platform. Now, this ancient commerce platform carried goods from the east to the west and from the west to the east. And before it was even named, silk became moving eastward. Wool, gold traveled east. There were entrepreneurs who created luxury goods and crafts and these products were distributed along these routes for thousands of years. Now let's fast forward a bit to today. Now, on this silk route, when you took the eyes of the engineers and you go beyond what we learned in school about religion going down these routes or about the plague, there's actually an insane amount of engineering prowess that went into making this happen. Think about the civil engineering that it took to build the bridges, the boats, and the roads. About the monetary innovation. Those of you who don't realize it, but there used to be a stable currency back then that everyone's dreaming of today. It was called gold and silver. And that let people trade beyond borders. So what I want you to do as you look at our platform today is take some of those eyes and think about the technology that's behind it and appreciate that it's that combination that's going to make us really powerful. So again, if we fast forward again, these are our routes in real time. And this is the Silk Road that's powered by Shopify. Now, centuries ago as well, if you wanted to take a, a trip along our Silk Roads, it would take two years from start to finish. And today, it's in milliseconds. So just like the Silk Road that was composed of an insane number of technical innovations, that's how I'd like you to look at our platform. And it's when combined that these solid foundations are giving you the trust to run your business. These are the building blocks of our retail operating system. And this is the journey and through which I want to take you and have a bit of a deep dive into each one. So let's start this journey into our retail operating system 
by talking about the open internet. So as you can imagine, commerce needs roads that are accessible so that products can actually keep flowing and knowledge can flow through borders. Now, as Silk Road merchants knew too well, trade boycotts between different regions and failed political allegiances would wreak havoc and actually stop the flow of goods. Now, that picture is something similar that we're seeing today and on the internet. There's people in states and companies that are trying to put up borders and walls. But who, those who were around when the internet was created remembers that the internet was created on open standards. It was built to be open. Things like DNS, HTTP, BGP. These are, and I think our need then is we have to protect and enhance these because it's the open internet that's providing us so much flexibility around commerce. So this is why Shopify is leading the fight, probably more than any company our size, in keeping the internet open. So I want to talk quickly about two of the really exciting initiatives that we've been part of. So let's start with payments. So when the internet was actually being built, the, the founding team, and I don't want to take anything about them, but given the small tidbit around the Silk Road that I just explained to you, when it was being built, the team had commerce amnesia. Think about it for a second. Roads without trade is almost unhuman. Now, if you look behind me, the first browser had a back button. It had a for forward button. What button is missing? The pay button. Isn't, it sounds pretty obvious now, <laughs> once you have a grasp of, of where we're from. So we joined the W3C in 2016 as a founding member of the Payments Working Group, looking at standardizing payment actions on the internet and testing checkout conversion. So this new pa payment specification allows you within any browser using the payment methods that are stored on your device to transact securely. So think about what was missing when the internet was built. This API is really simple. It's literally, do you have a wallet? Can we make a payment? And let's make it fast. And although Shopify, we've invested in our checkout for many, many years, we're always fans of making checkout as seamless and fast as possible. And that's why we support and are actively involved in these open standards communities, because I think if we can make this as seamless as possible, it's something that we want to power. So this means, and actually, the other thing that's really fascinating is we spent three years working on this. So we're taking a long-term view of actually investing in these standards to bring commerce to the whole internet. And the 1.0 release of the specification is actually coming out this year and is going to be supported in all browsers. So when you see that payment button, think of Shopify. We help make this happen. So let's move to the second open internet, uh, open internet initiative. And uh, you all saw a lot of these yesterday, right? 3D models. Um, now, they look shiny. They're fancy. But what do you think an engineer thinks about when we see these? <laughs> exactly. How big is that file going to be? <laughs> so as an engineer, we're always thinking about how are we going to send these images over the internet without slowing down online stores, without clogging the bandwidth that we have. Like, we want commerce to stay fast. But there's a lot of data to send. So we all know, and you probably, if you haven't guessed already, 3D models will be replacing images on the internet. That's a fact. But they have to be optimized for speed. And one of the challenges with 3D models is not just the overall size, but how do you efficiently store all this variant information, different colors, maybe different permutations. Now, with product images, this was simple, because all we had is you could have an image for each variant of your product. But think about what goes into the image format for 3D models. You have geometric data, there's scenes, there's materials. And it's not fathomable for us to have a different model or a different file for each one of these variants. So that's why we've been working really closely with the Kronos Group, which is an open standards body, to actually advance the file formats for 3D models on the internet. And in a, in a very un-Canadian way, I'm just going to say, we're kind of killing it. <laughs> so. Five of the six shops that are highlighted on Apple.com with some of the most kick-ass 3D models on the internet are powered by Shopify. Thank you. Yes. So thank you to all the pioneers out there who've been on this 3D model journey with us. We've just began. 
So these are just two of the many open internet initiatives that we're powering at Shopify. And I think the main takeaway here is that Shopify inv is investing on your behalf in advocating and working really hard for our merchants and partners to keep the internet open. So let's talk next about what we're doing around security and privacy. Now, as you can imagine, for any open network to work, merchants and partners have to trust it and feel secure. So let's return a bit to the past, to the Silk Road again. Now, as you can imagine, there were numerous threats as a merchant traveling along the Silk Road, from the goods to production methods to business secrets, had to be guarded. Now, one of the most important business secrets uh, uh, that happened around the Silk Road was actually the production of silk. I don't know if people remember that, but silk was discovered um, in China, and it took a couple of hundred years for people to figure out how to actually get one strand of silk out of that cocoon that was built. And, you know, as, as we're familiar with today, the Chinese got hacked, maybe inverse of what's happening today, but the Chinese got hacked by uh, two undercover Persian monks who infiltrated into China and found out the secret of how to get the one strand of silk by basically immersing the silkworm uh, in water and boiling it and making sure you can get the silk out. So you can think of that as one of the first <laughs> IP hacks that happened about 2,500 years ago. And those are still happening today. Um, the other tidbit is you can think that the, the Great Wall of China was not built for, as a tourist attraction. It was built as the first mass scale VPN on the planet. <laughs> so this wall protected the routes from the Mongols. There you have it. So security has been an integral part of any commerce platform. And it's this integrity and this commerce journey that we have to keep safe. So we feel it's our role and a really important role to provide you with this kind of protection. So let me start by explaining what we're doing by being clear about one thing. At Shopify, a merchant's data belongs to the merchant. It's their state secret and it's their business advantage. But this also means that a merchant plays a really important role over their data and who has access to it. Merchants play a big part in their own security. Now, if you want to travel the Silk Road at night, that's your imperative. But we have the tools to support you. But you have to use them. And you have to all use them. Now, this means that the security of a merchant store, then, is the sum of all those who influence it, the staff members you give access to, and the apps that you install. And in, in addition to that, one of the biggest threats to merchants' data is actually compromised credentials. Everyone in this room is going to get between 16 to 20 emails every month that are malicious, trying to steal your password. Now, we know that literally all that stands between you and your bank account is that one password. So this month, I'm pretty excited to ex launch. We have a new identity vault launching that's going to be a key part of Shopify's secure platform. Now, merchants and partners will now have one account, one password, and one security setting for everything you do at Shopify. Now, you saw a sneak peek of this yesterday in our Plus talk with Katie. This is powering our Plus product, but also extremely useful for every, anyone doing business at Shopify, because a lot of you have multiple dev stores, multiple partner accounts, or logging into Partner Academy. Now, what's really fascinating about the Identity Vault as well is it supports the new web authentication API that was created by the W3C. Now, if you're a specification geek, you'll also realize that the web authentication API won the prize for the best specification of the year. Anyone know that? No? You weren't there with us? It was actually really exciting. <laughs> Think about this. Like, what it basically does is it allows our servers to interact with the secure identity mechanisms that are on your devices, whether it be Apple Touch ID, Windows Hello, um, which is fantastic, because as some of you have been experiencing recently, we've turned on our Identity Vault, and if you have multiple logins at Shopify, you'll be able to merge your accounts into one and take that opportunity to turn on two-step authentication so that your password isn't the last line of defense. Thanks. Now, partners, you also play an extremely important part in the security and privacy of our platform. So last year, we created additional support around data ownership and privacy 
by developing different webhooks and APIs that allow you to treat data securely. Now, we hope this creates greater transparency, and especially around businesses when they're installing your apps and they want to know what you're actually doing with their data. So we've been ranking and monitoring the apps on our platform, because I think it's what our merchant expects us to do, to make sure that, that our partners are actually building applications that are respecting data on behalf of the merchant. Now, taking security seriously has also allowed us to keep merchants' data safe. Now, we're processing over 10 billion events every day, and that's about 10 petabytes of data. Now, we're able to handle all this because we have a foundation of security built into the platform. I also, I'm not so naive to think that you're just going to believe me, right? So just don't, I don't want you to just take my word on this. And we've been inv investing at Shopify in making Shopify one of the biggest targets for the community of security hackers or, or ethical security hackers around the world. So we have a network of over 3,000 security engineers who are working around the clock, participating in our programs worldwide. Now, our program's already awarded over a million dollars of bounties. Now, for those of you who are thinking, man, are these 3,000 people hacking my shop? Just feel safe. The way it works is they, we set up development stores and test shops, and these researchers look at vulnerabilities in our platform through these test shops, they report them to us, and we fix them as quickly as we can. So no one is playing around with your shop. So as you can see, there's a lot of eyes on our platform, and we welcome every single one of them. Now, there's obviously more to do. You're going to see an increasing investment this year in metafields on our platform. We want to make it even easier for apps to deal with data and actually not have so much liability in storing data or PII information. So stay tuned for more. There's a metafield session this afternoon that if you're interested, you should be attending. So these are just some of the ways that we're improving and innovating around the security of our platform. And hopefully what it means is some peace of mind for you building on our platform either building apps or building businesses. So next up, and we heard a lot about this yesterday, so I'm, not, I'm actually, for once, not going to talk about extensibility for 20 minutes. But let's dive into what extensibility means for our platform. So as you can imagine, successful merchants have long known that providing unique products and unique experiences is a key part of making commerce exciting and enjoyable. Now, if we go back in time again to the Silk Road, in what's known as the Library Cave in China, we discovered a lot of scrolls that actually gave us a really good view of what was happening on these routes. And what was fascinating was the amount of vibrancy and different products that were actually exchanged. Now, Dunghang, which was one of the most commercially viable uh, stops along the Silk Road, had things like precious stones, incenses, ra rainbow of colors of teas. So the Silk Road was not built for one product one type of merchant, or one type of commerce flow. And that's the philosophy that's guiding us in how we're building Shopify. And like the Silk Road, every store on Shopify is different. Now, when you, when you build on Shopify then, what we want you to do is give and make all these commerce experiences possible. And the key to this is our APIs and extensions. Now, if you go back five years, not 2,000, but just five, so Shopify time, there's a time that some of you might have remembered when the, shop, the API that powered the Shopify products was not the exact same API that powered the apps that you're building. Also, we had a lag between when we announced our APIs and we announced the features. Well, those gays are now gone. As you can tell from yesterday, our products are now powered with the exact same API and GraphQL API that we're building our apps on. So no lag. That's exciting. Even more, you saw that our new POS is being built with apps as a core feature built into the ex ex uh, experience. So yesterday, Vanessa gave us a great overview of all of the development features that we're building to our platform. And I think the takeaway here is clear, is that APIs are features. When you're building an operating system, APIs are the feature that's making it powerful. So take this as our commitment. We'll be committing to building as many APIs as we can to keep Shopify the most creative platform on which you can create any commerce experience. So this is our last tour into our platform. It's also the coolest. And it's our global infrastructure. 
As you can imagine, the global infrastructure of the Silk Road was probably one of the most key ingredients for meaning that the Silk Road could stay around for 2,000 years. And this in infrastructure is what empowered merchants to be able to trade not within their city, within their country, but actually globally. It was the actual roads, the redundancy, the towns that made everything possible. And that's what we're aiming at for Shopify. Now, if we're going to pop open the hood of Shopify, you'll see an infrastructure that was intentionally designed to, with global scale and internationalization in mind. When you open a business on Shopify, we want you to get access to a global superhighway from day one. Now, whether governments want it or not, cross-border selling is happening more and more. This is data from the World Bank that shows growth the amount of trade happening across the planet over the last 60 years. Now, we see this exact same trend on Shopify. Cross-border sales for Shopify merchants outside of our primary English-speaking markets has grown five times in the last five years. And just like the Silk Road's historic ports and hubs, we have our own day modern routes. So what you're seeing behind me is the infrastructure footprint of the technology that's powering Shopify. And this year, just this year, actually, we scaled from having two points of presence to 180 in over 80 countries on the planet. And these are the blue dots on the map. Now, this has decreased latency for buyers by up to 30% to 50%, depending on where you are on the planet. As you can see, we have two regions in North America and one in Canada. We'll be launching four new regions in the next 18 months. And our goal here is bringing servers closer to buyers and creating as fast of a consumer experience as we can. So now you see where our roads are. You see our commitment to actually building Shopify's infrastructure with the planet in mind. Let's take a look at some of the merchants that are traveling these roads and using our platform. And to do this, let's zoom into Canada for a bit. It's pretty topical. That's where we're at today. So on October, in October 2018, Canada ended a 95 years of cannabis prohibition. Now, Shopify... <laughs> cool, thanks. Now, Shopify worked with governments and licensed sellers across the entire country to provide a safe, reliable, and scalable platform for this new industry. So what actually happened on launch day through the eyes of an engineer? Well, as expected, when the doors opened at midnight, Sales went a bit high. Traffic increased in our Canada region, and the entire engineering team of Shopify was gathered around our dashboards. So the hype was real, which is good. But that's not my point here. So let's zoom out a bit and look at the impact across the entire Shopify platform. So this is traffic across all of Shopify on that exact same day. Now, you can tell the scale moved from thousands to millions. And Canada, or the traffic that you saw, was barely a blip. In fact, you can't see it on this graph at all. So this is the scale of commerce that's happening on Shopify. Now, a lot, a lot of merchants and partners ask me, hey, Jean-Michel, am I going to be the biggest merchant on Shopify? And as you can tell, the answer is usually no. <laughs> now, does anyone here have 5 million followers on Instagram or Twitter at all? No? Good. Okay, if you know someone who does, we do want to do some launch plans with you because there's a bit of planning for launching on Shopify, but other than that, bring us anyone you can find. We're ready. <laughs> now, Canada's kind of cool, but I want to show you some more examples. So let's take, some, uh, let's take some look at other merchants that are actually running on our global infrastructure. To do that, we're going to look at how many orders they get. So as you can imagine, we have a lot of merchants who are trying to get their first ka trying to get an order a day. And as you could probably imagine by now, this is not much of a sweat for our infrastructure. Um, we have a few more merchants, and probably a lot of these, who are getting traction. I mean, this is where it starts feeling great, doesn't it? This is where you're printing, you've been printing some labels on Shopify, and you're running out of paper. And maybe you want to call up our box man now and get into Shopify fulfillments. This, this is what it feels like when you start getting five to 20 orders a day. You know, um, 
we don't really break a sweat with this either. Now, what did Canada look like on this day? Well, it turns out on October 17th, Canada and all of our merchants in Canada, we, we didn't have one merchant, but the, the Canada merchants in this new industry processed around 100,000 orders that day. And you can see, we didn't break a sweat. Um, so let's look at some bigger merchants. But to do that, we're going to have to go from days to minutes. Now, it's cool. These numbers get really small. <laughs> you, can, you can barely see this. Um, so we have merchants now on the platform who regularly are selling over 8,000 orders a minute. That's 500,000 orders a day. Now, these flash sellers are insane, are insane. I mean, these are people who, again, have those 10 million followers. And this is fascinating. Now, not only that, but we have merchants on the platform today who are selling and peaking at the number of orders per minute, which our entire platform did at Black Friday, Cyber Monday last week, and this is happening weekly. So take, just take a moment for this to sink in. This chart is showing you businesses that are just starting off, businesses that are getting traction, businesses on their way to IPO, an entire country, entire country ending prohibition nationwide, and they all have access to the exact same technology and power of our platform. This is awesome. So if it wasn't clear as partners, bring us some more. <laughs> now, we know that scale is not the only thing that matters. For the small merchants, the medium merchants, all they want to know is peace of mind that when they do hit that Instagram post by the celebrity or they do hit the Dragon's Den win, that we're there to support them. So please share that message. But for everyone on our platform, regardless of size, speed matters probably more than scale. So let's talk about speed a bit. Now, we've been working to keep Shopify fast for years. And it's been fast for years. But there's always more we can do. Now, we're looking at performance wins that we can squeeze out. But we're also looking at big step changes that we can make and we can invest in. So in, in addition to the important latency improvements we did by expanding our network this year with the over 180 points of presence, I'm really excited to talk about two performance wins that you're all going to be getting really soon. So the first is an upgrade to our image delivery service. Now, whether you want to believe in 3D models and you want to adopt them, images still take over 50% of all internet traffic. And the default image delivery service at Shopify now supports WebP, and all of your images by default are going to be 30% faster, and everyone's online store is going to be fast as a result. So this is rolling out for free. You don't have to touch anything. Your store is going to get faster. But there's even more. Yesterday, we talked a lot about the new online store. We talked about sections. We talked about the speed of merchants putting their stores together. But we didn't talk about the speed of how fast they're going to be. So I'm really, really excited about this. Now, we have an entirely new storefront render that's in the labs at Shopify that's already running on some shops. Now, this, if, you, if you don't understand maybe some of the technicality about the storefront render, it's basically what takes your Shopify theme and turns it into HTML and JavaScript. Now, what we've realized is out of the box, our themes have always been fast. But as they scale and grow and be more complex, they were slowing down a bit. So this new liquid renderer is seven times faster than the current one. This is, this is great. And again, and again, everyone's going to get this for free as we roll it out this year. So I think the combination of new sections, the combination on a kick-ass theme editor, and the combination of speed are going to make sure your online stores are the best on the internet. Now, that was a lot of things that we're doing for you. You're going to get it for free. There's nothing you have to do. But partners, you also play an important role in keeping Shopify fast like a critical role in keeping Shopify fast. Think about all the flexibility that we've given you to customize the experiences, to build app extensions. And with great power comes great responsibility. And like, let's be frank, we're within friends here. We've seen some partners create websites and online stores that have over 60 network calls on every page load. 
We've seen JavaScript. That's megabytes. We've seen 500 megabyte images on the homepage of online stores. Was that? Was that? <laughs> We've seen it all. So soon, we'll be launching and highlighting site speed ranking in the partner's dashboard. Yes. Now we want you to have more visibility and accountability into how you can help us effectively make the entire platform fast. Now I know it might sound intimidating, but we really have to band together con to consistently push for a fast web experience. So we've been collecting performance data across the entire Shopify platform for the last year, and we're going to make that available for you. Now we want to continue to provide platform improvements that everyone's going to get for free, but we still need your help for all the areas that you have, as partners, great control over. So, we just went through a lot. <laughs> Let me just do a quick recap. So within our platform, we're working really hard to keep the, op the internet open. With, as you've heard, our investment in the W3C around payments and the Kronos group around models and more. As one example, we're a founding member of the GraphQL Foundation, which is working on the specification for GraphQL. So that's our commitment to you, is we're going to be working on your behalf for a long time to think about the long term of the internet. The second thing is we're investing in security for our merchants with the new identity vault that's coming out. And we're continuing to invest in our large research community. Third, around extensibility, as you've heard and you saw yesterday, APIs are a feature of our platform now. And finally, we're investing globally in our entire infrastructure so that you can start your business and IPO on the same platform. So this is our Silk Road. I hope that this journey into our platform have given you a bit of trust. Because I tell you what, the journey's not always friendly. This is hard stuff we're working on together. Sometimes roads get washed out with a hurricane. Sometimes bridges wobble a bit. But I think if you understand where we're going and why, you're going to be on that journey with us. So here's our new digital Silk Road the one that we're all building together for merchants of every size anywhere on this planet. So thank you, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your night. Safe journeys, and bon voyage. <laughs>